Hey guys, it's Kristen with IcyStarsClothing.com. I have one more jelly roll project to show you this week. And to say that's the last jelly roll project would be a total lie because I'm always learning new things and I'm always looking forward to sharing them with you. But for now, um, I have been working on a jelly roll series and we've been looking at so many different projects. If you have not been following along with that series, I highly suggest that you click the subscribe button down below and then go back and look through my channel and find all these jelly roll projects that we've been doing. It's been so much fun and I've learned so much with you and I know that so many of you have been inspired by this, but I have one more project to share with you today. This right here is such a cute, cute project. Look at this bowl. Now, this is something, I have string on the bottom of it, hold on. There we go. Okay, so this is something that I made and it is a very, very simple project. And even if you are a beginner sewist, I swear to you, you can do this. It was really, really fun, okay? So this is what it is. It takes a rope that I got from the hardware store. Now I'm gonna to talk to you about the ropes in just a minute so you'll know exactly what kind of rope to get. And then it takes jelly roll. Now there's a lot of different like customizations that you can do with this project. So it doesn't have to look exactly like this one. This is completely customizable and you don't have to do what I did, but I'm gonna show you the form more or less of the tutorial so that you can create and make your own ones of these, okay? So let me show you the back right here. So this is where it starts right here. See that little spiral right there? This is where it starts and then I went around and around and around and around. And if you can see like really, really close up in here, look at my stitches. They're just zigzag stitches, okay? There is really nothing like crazy hard about this project, okay? And it's fantastic and it's really, really useful. So these are good for gifts. They're good for just like storing little trinkets and things around your house, catch balls on the ends of your nightstand or whatever to catch your jewelry in at the end of the night. Basically, I have not found a use yet where these are not the perfect little things, okay? So this is the one that I made and I'm gonna show you a couple different options on what you can do on the little end here as well because no matter how many layers you go up, in this bowl, um, you're always going to have an end that you're going to need to tuck and end somehow, okay? Because remember we start down here, you're gonna end up somewhere on the top here and you'll want to make sure that that is sealed off to where it doesn't unravel or come apart in any way. So let's talk for a second about jelly roll strips, okay? Your standard jelly roll strips are two and a half inches wide, okay? Um, what I found when I did this bowl and my other bowls that I've done is this is kind of wide, okay? So you don't necessarily need this much fabric. I felt like I was wasting a lot of fabric when I was using this. Um, what I did like is cutting them in half, okay? So you can use yardage fabric on this as well. Um, this is one and a quarter inches wide. So I basically cut my jelly roll strips in half and made these. Now these thinner ones were a little bit easier to work with for me. <laughs> I just cut like a bunch of these and this is what I'm going to be using to show you today how to make this bowl. You can choose to cover your entire rope with jelly roll strips or fabric strips rather. You can use scrap fabric strips. There is no rules in this, okay? And I love these projects because there's no rules which means you can't mess up. Okay, you can't mess up, you can't do it in a wrong way. There are no rules. So it's just kind of your personal preference and you kind of learn as you go, right? So um, a note about the rope, okay? Now this is the rope that I liked as my favorite one, okay? So it's a nylon rope and it is, actually I'm gonna have to look on the packaging, which I think is probably at the bottom of my garbage can to see exactly the size of this. Once I do that, I'm gonna put that right here down below so that you know what size rope that I got, but this is a nylon one, okay? So basically, it's, it's plastic, okay? But um, I liked it because it, it had a little bit of form to it. Like I can bend it and it still kind of keeps that, um, rigid structure, okay? Another one that you can do, and now this just depends on like what you have on hand at the time, like there's, um, like I said, this one has a little bit more structure, but this is a fully cotton rope, and um, I just picked this up at the um, hardware store. I mean, nothing like incredibly special about this. I just, it came in like a length of like a thousand feet or something like that, so like plenty, plenty to work with, right? 
So you can also get like a cotton rope, which let me show you the difference between these two. So they're roughly the same size and thickness, but this one is a lot more fuzzy, okay? This one is a lot more um, straight. And, you know, this is the nylon one, this is the cotton one. Now this one, it's, it's a lot more flexible. So I'm gonna give you a couple options. Now, with these bowls, I've also seen people make coasters, okay? So you don't have to go up the sides on these. If you wanted to make coasters, that's what this cotton one is perfect for, okay? Because it will also absorb some of the condensation from your cups, okay? So if you're planning on making coasters, this is the perfect one for you. And this is the cotton one, okay? If you're planning on making like a rigid bowl and you want some good structure to it, then I would suggest the nylon rope. Now, if you're gonna use the nylon rope, there's one more thing that you would probably like to have on hand, and that is this right here. Now, this is just a lighter, okay? So this is the one that we use for the barbecue pit in our house. But it, um, there, see, it just has a little flame on the end and, um, the thing with this nylon rope is once you cut it, you can see it's already happened right here because I messed with it, but once you cut it, it kind of starts to come unraveled and come apart. And what I did was I just took this lighter and I kind of, um, I lit the end on fire and then um, just enough to melt the plastic within the rope and just kind of, um, I did it with my hand. It, it wasn't really that hot or anything and it wasn't dangerous. I probably wouldn't recommend this to a child to do, but um, you know, and I was able to just blow it out and then kind of like smush it together where it's not just gonna completely unravel and leave me with a really, really big mess. So with that, I am going to be working with the nylon rope here and I'm going to make another basket and I've got my fabric strips here that I'm gonna be working with and um, let's get started. So that's really all you need actually for this project is you need some fabric, you need your lovely sewing machine, which you can't see, but I'm gesturing to because it's right here on my table. You'll need your lovely sewing machine. You need to do a zigzag stitch. Make sure you have lots and lots of thread. You may want a couple extra bobbins wound. So let's, uh, let's get started on that. Here's all my fabric strips. I'm gonna set those aside for a little bit. And I don't really have this at any particular size. I just kind of leave it here off to the side so that I can continue to see how big I want my bowl to actually be. Now I've got one fabric strip here. You don't have to use all the same fabric. You're welcome to use all different fabrics if you like. I'm gonna show you what I did here with this end where it's kind of poking out just a little bit right there. I didn't quite get those ends to seal up. So I'm gonna show you what I did. Let me see if I can get like a decent picture there. You can see it's kind of like fraying out a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is just, yeah, find a lighter that has some gas in it. There we go. You see how it just kind of melted those ends a little bit they're not as frayed and then after it stopped being smoldering hot and it's still a little bit pliable you can kind of get those ends to cool together this is just on the nylon cord don't do this to the cotton cord or you're going to end up with a lot more than just a tiny little fire so this is just because this nylon cord is plastic and i just want to melt those ends to where they don't fray anymore so the next step that you'll do is take your fabric and you want to do it with the this is the wrong side this is the right side you can tell that by these bright little stars here the best way that I've found to do this is to look at it like you're putting it at a 45 degree angle on the cord, okay? What you've got here is to put it like a 45 degree angle. So I like to put it where I can kind of picture like an imaginary line going right there. And that seems to be the best angle for wrapping to where that the ends don't um, completely come undone. And I don't do this on the whole cord. I just do it on little sections as I go. But I like to make sure, let me show you, I'm gonna do this really loosely and then I'll show you what you should be doing. So you see how like this is kind of coming apart down here? I like to make sure that I wrap it as close to the actual cord as possible, okay? 
and I've got some extra strings kind of popping off here. You don't really need to worry about those because it's gonna happen whether you intend for it to or not. But by wrapping it as close to the cord as possible, it doesn't have to be perfect, again. I mean, it's, it's really not gonna show on your final project unless you have like a lot of excess fabric here. But so here's the very, very end. I'm going to wrap that in a tight little spiral. And this is probably the most important part of your whole basket, okay, is to get this foundation started. Now, you don't have to wrap this whole first piece, but you wanna get enough to where your spiral is probably about the size of like maybe a, a nickel or maybe, um, maybe an inch or so. And then we're going to stitch from here to here. And then we're gonna go back and do from here to here, okay? So you want to use a nice zigzag stitch on this. Now this is gonna be probably the most difficult part. It's really not that difficult, but it is going to be very important that you go from here to here, and then you're gonna go from here to here. So you're gonna do like a plus sign all the way across. But I mean, maybe like an inch and a half or so is about the right size that you want here to start with. For those of you that are curious, these are the settings that I'm using on my machine. Um, I just kind of played around with some scrap fabric until I found a stitch that I really, really liked. And um, that's how I figured it out. There wasn't a lot of math or science to it. I just kind of figured out a stitch that worked well for me and I liked that one. This is what I have right now. I've clipped that so it stays in place while I got my machine set up. I'm gonna take it off and I've got this little spiral right here. Now I'm gonna tuck it underneath here and what you're going to want to do is start from the very center and it might be a little bit tough just to get that wedged in there, but it will get easier as you go along. So start from the very, very center and work out, okay? And then back up all the way to the edge because if you start on the edge and work forward, you're gonna end up with like a wonky, um, almost like an oval, okay? So just trust me on that. Work from the very center to the side and then back up and do it again. That way you have a nice, really good, strong foundation there. And now we're going to go backwards. And then we're going to go forwards. And then tie a quick knot there. Let me show you what I've got here. It's not the prettiest thing, okay? <laughs> it's not the prettiest thing, but it's strong and that is what is important. So we've got the stitches that are going from one side all the way to the other. Now I'm going to wrap this around just a little bit more to where that I can go from here to here. That way this is nice and solid. I'm not worried about this little bit popping out at all. So I'm gonna stick this back underneath the machine and go from here to here. And what I'm doing here is I'm just making sure that this is pulled tight around there so I don't have a bunch of like floofy fabric sticking out. And again, we're gonna start right in the middle. Put my needle down. I'm gonna start right in the middle. I'm gonna go all the way to the edge and then I'm gonna hit the back stitch and go all the way back to the opposite edge and then come back over. Right there, that was an issue. I broke a needle right there. Make sure that you're not pushing on this too much. So, error to avoid, make sure you're not pushing on this too much to force it through, okay? Let the machine do most of the work for you. We're back, brand new needle. Um, sorry to be the one to show you that, but it probably isn't a bad idea to start with a brand new needle on this project in the first place because you're going through several layers of fabric here as well as the rope or whatever material that you are using to wrap this around. So let's try that again. 
and lets your machine do most of the feeding work back and forth. That's why I ended up breaking my needle and I'm so sorry machine, but um, that was a very good lesson to learn. So let's try that again. Here's my little plus side on the bottom. Here is what it looks like on the other side. It is kind of a little bit messy. There it is on the bowl that I did. You really can't see it. That was on the bottom of the bowl and here is the inside of the bowl. You really can't see it too bad, but I guarantee once you see the rest of this bowl come together, this isn't really going to show up that much, okay? Right now it shows up kind of ugly because I have all of this, um, thread here but once I get the other zigzags coming through you won't be able to see it and it'll be great. Here is where the actual fun part comes in which is the building of the bowl. So you're going to continue wrapping this right here all the way around your cord and I just kind of like to keep it tight make sure there aren't any big extra I don't know bubbles of fabric popping through. Um, with this, you're just gonna be able to see mostly color. You're not gonna be able to see like prints or anything with the fabric. You may be able to see like a change in color or something, but you want to make sure that there aren't any weird bubbles of fabric. You see how it's nice and smooth there. That's what we're wanting. I'm gonna put this up underneath my sewing machine and I'm gonna use right here where this fabric is kind of glued to the side there. I'm gonna start right here and I'm gonna go from here to here. And I'm just going to continue to rotate my piece as the machine is working. Make sure you let the machine do its job, but you are just kind of feeding it along and then pause once you need to restart your fabric and kind of get it wound again, okay? But you're gonna go zigzag stitch is going to start here and end on that rope and start here and end on that rope. So whichever zigzag stitch you choose, make sure that it is wide enough to go across both of them, okay? And then sometimes I have to pause just a bit and you want to lift up that presser foot just so you can kind of rotate. It gets easier as you're doing much larger circles, but these first really tight ones tend to be um, where I have to pause and lift up the presser foot and adjust the fabric. And you know, it, it gets easier as the circles get wider because you're doing much longer, almost straighter uh, seams here. But just keep working nice and slow around the center here. And then we need to lift up and rotate a bit Put it back down and continue. Notice that I'm rotating when the needle is already down inside here because I don't want to stretch my thread all that much. And I'm getting kind of close to my fabric end here so I'll show you what to do with that next. So I'm kind of at the end of my fabric right here. So I'm just going to grab another piece of fabric and do the exact same thing. I kind of want it to run in the same direction. As it was previously. So I'm just wrapping more fabric around it to get it started. Some people will put like a dab of Elmer's glue or something in there or glue stick. I don't tend to like that because I feel like my machine will go over that and I don't want my needle to get gummed up by anything. Um, I just kind of hold it in place at the parts where they come together because after I sew over it, I won't have to worry about that anymore. So it's a little bit bulky right there. Let me see if I can kind of fix that. And you'll see that like the more that you do it, it kind of develops its own texture. So you don't have to worry about it and like fret over it too much. But I just wanna hold that in place while 
<coughs> I'm getting these two situated and getting it sewn down. So this is right where my fabric pieces come together here and I'm gonna sew them into place. As this circle is getting a little bit bigger I'm able to sew longer strips together without having to lift my presser foot up as much and we've only been doing this for you know just a few rounds. I tend to stop this bottom flat part when it gets to be about the size of a little bit bigger than a coaster okay that's kind of how I like to keep my bowls size wise because they will kind of bow out just a little bit but uh, let's get this first part sewn and then I'll show you how to go up the sides. strings like this that like pop out everywhere um, my best advice is to just ignore them and keep sewing because you can always give your bowl a haircut <laughs> after you're done but you're gonna drive yourself mad if you try to get all these little bitty strings and hairs out of the way right now so let's just keep working on this and then I'll show you what I've got so far So as I'm pulling these around, I'm making sure that this is butted up right up next to the other fabric. Here is my bowl so far. So this is going to be the bottom of the bowl, all right? This is what sits up on your table nice and flat, and then the lines are gonna go up from there. Now I think I'm gonna do, this to me is kind of small. Okay, so this is what I've got so far, all right? I don't know why I judge it by like, cup size but I do so this is kind of a it's a coaster size right but it's a little on the small size for my particular tastes um let's see what I did with this bowl that I showed you in the example earlier is um it's it's pretty big right so I have plenty of room around the outside um I would say that more it's more of like a trivet size in the middle but I'm gonna go another couple rounds with this one maybe another um fabric strip or two just to make sure that the bottom and the base of my bowl is a really good size not have to be perfect it just kind of depends on like um you know it, it all kind of gets squished down in here i just don't want any big giant like extra loose rolls of fabric there because i want them to all get sewn into this so as you see i'm doing it there's not really like a specific method or a science to it but you do want to make sure that it gets wrapped around the rope and i think i'm gonna do one more thing of fabric here pretty good size for my base. Um, the next thing that you're going to do is really no different than what we've been doing before. I'm getting ready to uh, change my fabric. I'm gonna go ahead and get that ready. And then I'm gonna sew a little bit past 
where I'm changing the fabric. That way it doesn't have to be doubly awkward adding fabric and changing up the sides at the same time. And I've got quite a bit here wrapped up, but um, another tip is if you like having it nice and wrapped tight, you can just stick a clip on the end of that and that'll keep this fabric in place while you're working. So that is a good little hint right there. Keep these clips handy because they work everywhere in your sewing room. Okay, so what's gonna happen is my bowl is going to end up on the inside of my sewing machine here. And what I want to happen is for my bowl to be on this side of my sewing machine. So we're gonna fix that. If you started on the inside like me too, it's okay. It's easily fixable. So now we're gonna sew on this end. I had it underneath like this and I was using this way. We're gonna sew right here and do the exact same thing, but I'm gonna move the bowl to this side of my sewing machine. So what we're teaching the bowl to do right now is just a very, very gradual incline to get this curve of the bowl right here. And put my clip on there to keep it nice and tight and just a very gradual incline right there. bowls is there's no like right or wrong way to do it you don't have to put fabric on the entire bowl you don't even have to put fabric on the bowl at all you could just do just a rope bowl and do your zigzag stitches all the way through and not have to worry about the fabric personally I kind of am in love with fabric so I like the look of the fabric and I think I'm gonna like this look with the entire bowl being fabric as well but you don't have to do it this way. You can switch up the fabric. You can use scrap fabrics. You can use whatever you want on these bowls. So essentially we're still doing a straight zigzag stitch, but I'm pulling this up and that's going to start to curve these little edges right here. But the most important thing is to keep these two, the seam between these two pieces of rope here right in between your zigzag. So you're catching both sides of the rope and the fabric as you're going through. So right now I've got my bowl kind of at about a 45 degree angle here. If you've got like a 90 degree angle between your table and your needle, I've got the base of my bowl at about a 45 degree angle. Now it won't always be that way, but that is a really good angle to get started to start getting that lift of the sides of your bowl. get this shape now the higher that I go on the sides the more that I keep it tilted at this angle the more that it's going to get bowl like so right now I have kind of like what I would consider like a tray or something to kind of keep your keys in or or whatever little bits that you have but I want to make it a bowl so I'm going to keep going up the sides I'm not going to change anything different about my form I'm still going to wrap my fabric around it I'm still going to keep it at this nice angle once you get a little bit further out if you don't want quite such a wide bowl at the top you can pull this up higher but you're gonna need to get a little bit further out because you want your base to be 
I don't know, a little bit further out so that you can really get that angle on your sides. But we'll get that in just a minute. Let's just keep going with what we're doing right now to continue to build the sides of the bowl. with me so far. We've done a lot of sewing in circles. We've gone through a lot of zigzagging threads. Now we're kind of getting close to where I think I want to end my bowl and I'm going to show you a couple ways how to do it. Now the bowl that I showed you in the example before was just rope. There was no fabric on the end here and I chose that because I just wanted to do the rope. This one I'm going to show you how to do the fabric on the end but it takes a little bit of not only really skill, but just a little bit of forethought and making sure that you have everything the way that you want it. You have the, the height the way that you want it and everything on your bowl. So what I have so far is this right here. This is where we're at. This is about where my last strip ends right here. And I've got it clipped here to hold that in place. Um, I want to leave a little bit of wiggle room here, okay? Don't sew until you're like right up against the edge of where you want your piece to end. I've got um, maybe about five or six inches or so of wiggle room here. Now I'm going to pull my fabric back a little bit and I'm going to cut my rope, okay? Right there. Now, just for sanity's sake, I am going to I'm gonna buy a new lighter soon, but I'm gonna singe the end of that just a little bit so it doesn't go away from me and make sure that it's nice and tacky and it's not going to shrink away or move. Next thing I'm going to do is pull all of this back over it to where that this is wrapped. And I'm gonna take this raw edge of fabric right here. Actually, I've got a selvage edge right here, which I don't necessarily need. So I'm gonna trim that selvage off. And I am going to tuck that in to where there are no raw edges here on this side, okay? And I want to pull that over slightly to where all I have is fabric on the end. See, my rope is completely inside this fabric tube right here, okay? There is no, no rope hanging out the end, okay? So now, just for sanity's sake, I'm gonna stick a clip on that so that I can sew the rest of this, and then I'm gonna show you what to do with the end here. Now there's so many different ways on the internet that you can tame the end of your rope here. You can um, add handles to your basket. You can like make little lumps to where you have like handles on each side of your basket, and that kind of helps camouflage it as well. But what I'm gonna show you today is just a very quick and easy like uh, way to get it off without, um, having to do too much extra work. So let's get started. I'm gonna sew this last little edge right here and then I'll get a little bit closer so you can see what I do with the end. Okay, this is gonna be so simple. I'm gonna take my little clip off and I am going to tuck this fabric right here behind. So I just want this to go and then taper off right there, okay? So I'm gonna tuck it right there behind and I'm going to make sure that these are lined up right next to each other. That's just a little bit of a fabric bump there, right there. And I can tuck it back in between there and I'm gonna sew right along that line. And then I'm gonna backstitch just to make sure that it locks in place. And there's the edge of my bowl. Nothing fancy right there, but it does its job, right? This is my beautiful finished bowl. And you can see that rope right there goes right off the side. 
here's what it looks like from the outside. If I wanted to, I can go in and I can tuck that up underneath and maybe do a couple hand stitches just to finish it off a little bit more professionally. I did get kind of a, a weird loop of fabric right there. I could also go back and I can zigzag stitch right over that right there to where it will not come undone. It will not show. Now this is with the nylon rope, okay? I can kind of fold this bowl and it will stay a little bit, okay? So really the bowl is like circular, but because I'd use the nylon rope and it's got a little bit more structure to it, I can kind of bend and fold this to where it is exactly where it needs to be, whether I want it a nice oval shape or whether I want it to be a nice round shape. Now, what I was talking about earlier about giving your bowl a haircut, um, which is a very weird phrase, but like right here, there's a couple little strings and stuff that could be trimmed out of this bowl. So you may want to, before you give this to anybody really, really special or important, you may want to give your bowl just a little bit of a trim of some of these little extra hairs and stuff that are hanging out, especially if you covered all of your rope and fabric. That kind of makes a little bit of a difference. It doesn't show as much on this bowl where I did like bits of fabric mixed with just plain solid rope. Um, this one, I took my end here and I went and I turned it before I did the zigzagging stitch. So then I did a zigzag stitch here and I did a zigzag stitch here just to keep it in place, okay? And it adds just a little bit of an interest point to the bowl. Ta-da, that is your bowl. So how did it come out? How is your beautiful bowl? This is my finished bowl right here. I really, really, I'm in love with this aqua fabric. I can't help it. I love the way that it turned out and I hope that you are so happy with yours. If you have any questions, please make sure that you contact me. You can leave them in the comments down below. Tell me how things worked out for you. I really, 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 really love hearing from you. My name is Kristen with icstarsquilting.com. I hope that you have had a wonderful time with me during this video and I can't wait to see what you create next. Bye.